Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome back to the Pierce Foundation webinar in Plant Sciences here at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Faculty of Agriculture, Food and Environment in Rehovot. To those uh, that watch us uh, from uh, through the web overseas, again, good morning or good evening wherever they are and welcome. Uh, we will continue with our uh, student presentation and the first presentation uh, for this morning will be by, sorry, by uh, Amit uh, Kumar Jaiswal from Nepal. Uh, Amit has uh, completed his BSc degree in agriculture from the Tribhuvan uh, University in uh, Nepal and uh, following that he spent uh, nine months training in the Arava International Center from where he arrived here to do his master's degree uh, at the Faculty of Agriculture. Amit will tell us today on the establishment of host-free system to grow Bedelovibrio bactervirus and the analysis of the genetic background of that population in comparison to established host independent strains. Amit, please. Salam, Namaste. I am Amit Kumar Jaiswar from Nepal. Today I am going to present my research exercise seminar on the topic of establishment of the host free system to grow Delavibrio bacteriborus and analysis of the genetic background of that population in comparison to host independent strain. This research exercise was conducted under the supervision of Eduard Zukovic from the Department of Plant Pathology and Microbiology of the Hebrew University. Delavibrio is an obligatory predatory bacteria. It used to prey the other in other uh, gram negative bacteria and Delavibrio itself is a gram negative bacteria and they are motile, coma in shape and they are uniflagellated bacteria. They are very small in size, size range from 1 to 2 micrometer in length and 0 0.25 to 0 0.45 micrometer in width. It has a distinct attack phase which are small, vibrio like and they move very fast when uh, they sort the prey it, and they have a, they are also the flagellated cell. They invade to a periplasmic space of the other gram negative bacteria like Pseudomonas, E. coli and various other bacteria also. They are widely found in the aquatic and terrestrial environment and they are detected from the soil sample, biofilm, uh, sewage, water and sea and fresh water and even from the gut of the human being and the uh, various animal. Delavibrio used to form a plague in the E. coli lawn which are, which are transparent and clear in, clearly, clear and phylogenetically it belongs to Delta proteobacteria and the family Delavibrio nesi. Because of this, uh, their uh, predatory lifestyle, they have the potential for reducing and modulating the bacteria population. As we know that uh, the gram-negative gram antibiotic resistant in the gram negative bacteria are, are raised at the frightening level so they can be used as a living antibiotic against the animal and human pathogen. And it can be used as efficient for the bio as a biocontrol agent for the uh, various plant pathogen. And it is suggest suggested that it can be efficiently used for the water purification and biofilm control also. Delavibrio life cycle has a biphasic life cycle and it is also called as the uh, two membrane life cycle. The life star cycle starts from the uh, attack phase which uh, attach to the uh, outer membrane of the other gram negative uh, bacteria and attach may be the temporary or permanent. If the perma attachment is permanent then the infection took place. Then after the attachment they go, they enter into the periplasmic space of the gram negative bacteria and they modify the peptidol link, uh, peptidol linkage of the cell wall and form a stable spherical uh, structure called a deloplast. Here you can see that this is a delovibrio and it is a gram negative bacteria structure. 
after the formation of Delo Plus, there is the growth and development stage where elongation takes place and DNA replication takes place. And then after that, uh, synthesis of the flagella took place and the lysis occur, occur and new cycle is started again. The life cycle occurred from two to four hours and it gives three to six progeny from a E. coli or single E. coli cell and it is reported that even a uh, uh, progeny can be get from the elongated E. coli cell. Also, Delovibrio is the obligatory predatory bacteria, but it is uh, reported by Seder and Star in 1969. It can be grown as a host independent uh, strain in the rich medium. Uh, and reported that it in the frequency of 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 7. In the further research, they found the 5 percent of population grow as a host independent in the pseudomonas extract, and in the 50 percent population grow as a, in a E. coli extract, protein extract. And further in 2009, uh, uh, DASIP used a DAP oxytrop uh, pre E. coli cell to isolate uh, the host independent strain, which they found in 2 percentage. The host independent Delovibria have also the similar life cycle. They start from the attack phase, this is the attack phase, and they elongate it. And, uh, and division take place, again the synthesis of the flagella took place. And again the new cycle is started. And this is, sorry. Gene involved in the host independent phenotype. Cotter and Th Thomas 1992 suggested that mutation in the uh, in the host interaction locus called heat locus, which are 959 base pair, it is involved in the development of the host independent strain from the host dependent strain. And further, uh, uh, Wardell 90 2010 suggested that there is the most uh, mute common mutation that is 44 base pair deletion. Uh, 44 base pair deletion in the uh, a single open reading frame called the BD01. 110, also called a heat gene, uh, which are within the heat locus, and this is the heat gene, and this red portion are the common 44, 42 deletion, which uh, involve in the development of host independent uh, strand. And Cotter and Thomas found, uh, reported that when we uh, reintroduce the heat gene from the wild type Delovibrio into the uh, mutated uh, host independent strain, they were again able to form the flag in the E. coli lawn. As I mentioned that uh, host dependent Delovibria have the, either two membrane uh, lifestyle system and the two membrane lifestyle of the Delovibria is challenging system for the research as there is a combined suspension of the host and Delovibria itself. And the genetic manipulation of Delovibria uh, depend upon the host uh, host, so it is very difficult to determine the micro molecular resource of the Delovibrio. And if the method inducing, uh, uh, inducing the growth of the host independent uh, variant, then it can provide a relative simple model to study the Delovibrio biology and it can elevate the complexity to up to membrane culture for genetic mem uh, manipulation for proteomic and else also. So, my research uh, uh, exercise objective is to establish a host free system to grow the significant fraction of Delovibrio bacteria based population as a host independent. And another objective was to quantify the elongating host independent variant and to identify if the heat locus of this oxygen growing cell is altered or not. So, in material methodology, in this ex, uh, research exercise, we, we try to develop a two host free system. One, we try to grow the delivery in the uh, host protein extract of E. coli, and another uh, with the cell envelope which and fill with the same host extract. For preparation of the host protein extract, we first uh, uh, grow the E. coli cell for, uh, overnight for the stationary phases, then we harvest it, 
uh, after stationary phases and we sent a fish for two times for the washing of the cell suspension. And then we, resus uh, we suspended in the one ml hepage to get concentrated cell suspension. Then this uh, one ml uh, cell sus equalized cell suspension was uh, was treated to sonication uh, and pre uh, sonication and precaution should be take taken that there should be proper cooling. We do one minute brushing of the cell and again five minute cooling so that it prevent from the denaturation of protein. And again we uh, do the centrifuge for two times to for the purification of the uh, uh, protein what, what we get from the sonication and protein looks alloys transparent in color they are just like a uh, it looks like oil and the, after that we filter through the 0 0.2 uh, micrometer filter to uh, syringe filter to discard the, all the cell debris and we uh, submitted for the centrico centrifugal filter to for the desaltening of the macromolecule from the protein then we uh, take the protein for the uh, protein assay. We did uh, determine the protein by Bradford quantification and uh, uh, the plate was read by micro plate reader. And the, it was quick frozen in the liquid nitrogen and stored to minus 20 degree till use. And another host free system was to growing the uh, uh, Dello Vibrio in the ghost. Ghosts are the uh, cell envelope of the bacteria and uh, which by uh, osmotic lysis, which are practically free from the cytoplasm. And in this method, we use the DAP oxotrop E. coli bearing the Sul A gene. First, we grow, take the del, uh, E. coli cell in the LB media, and we, uh, as we know that D, uh, DAP oxotrop cannot, uh, uh, cannot make themselves a uh, uh, new cell wall, so we put the exogenously DAP for the initial growth of uh, E. coli cell. Then we incubated for the, uh, in 37 degrees Celsius till it reached to the uh, optical density of 0 or 2. And we add the 0 point every orbinose to uh, uh, activate the gene Sul A gene. Sul gene, Sul A gene inhibit the septation of the elongated E. coli cell. So we can get the desired size of the E. coli cell. And again, afterward, we incub incubated, and there was centrifuge, uh, centrifuge, and we get the uh, elongated E. coli cell, and they were again resuspended in the 50 ml LB media. And again, we put the orbinos to, uh, to prevent further septation of the elongated cell. Then uh, it was incubated for uh, 20 minutes to consume all the DAP, what we added initially, and it was divided into two batches. Then uh, each batch antibiotic media was added uh, for the growth of the E. coli cell, and 60% sucrose solution was added as a osmotic, osmotic protectant to decrease the gradient uh, developed by the osmolytic, uh, osmotic lysis of the cell. And we uh, incubated in the incubator for 30 minutes so that the osmotic lysis take place and the, we, we can observe the swelling of the cell in the microscope. And again, it was centrifuge. And we add the 3 mg per ml protein extract in one batch and another in the hepas as a for the control. And DNA was added, added uh, to uh, digest all the residue uh, DNA from the suspension and it was uh, incubated and it was centrifuged for centi uh, 15 minutes so that the protein uh, can enter into the uh, uh, ghost in the cell envelope and buffer also can go enter into the cell envelope. Then it was, sus uh, the pallet was suspended in the one ml hepas and they were centrifuged in, uh, they were stored for one uh, four degree Celsius and they can use for the, for the one week for the experiment. Under the microscope, the, go, uh, the cell envelope look like this and it is filled of the protein or hepas. For the uh, experiment in the uh, 
uh, with the hot protein extract of the E. coli, we use varying amount of the protein of the extract based upon the protein content. We use 1, 3, 5, and 10 mg, but for the content, we do not use the uh, uh, extract, but you, we use the PYE media. Similarly, similarly, for the experiment with the ghost, we use uh, the sorry. We 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 use the ghost with the protein as a treatment and uh, helps for the control, and it was incubated at the room temperature. And to find the, the uh, to find the viral content, we do the uh, double agar la double layer agar plating for the dilubibrio, and first uh, we did the serial dilution, and we uh, we uh, melted the soft agar, and we put the 300 microliter E. coli and 100 microliter dilubibrio, and and split in the uh, dilute uh, DNB agar plate and incubated for six days, and plaque forming unit was counted per ml. And for the uh, elongating cell, we use the cyber green staining. Cyber green staining is a rapid and accurate uh, way of finding the number of the bacterial cell. We first we take the cell suspension, and we centrifuge for two time and resuspend it in the uh, DDW water for the washing. And we add the cyber green for the hundred micro one microliter for 100 microliter for cell. And we incubated in the ice for 15 minutes so that cyber green can bind the DNA, DNA of the bacteria. And it was uh, put in the Teflon limited slide coated with the 0 0.1 uh, gelatin. This is a special slide so it can b fix the bacterial cells. It cannot moves, move when while looking under the microscope. And they were dry and it was uh, mounted with the anti fat to harden to increase the shelf life of the cyber green. And, and this was observed on the, under the EP fluorescent microscope and the photograph was taken. To identify if the gene uh, heat locus of the grown dialovibria is uh, altered or not, we did the cell suspension was submitted to the polymerase change reaction. We uh, used the, this uh, BD0108 EF and forward and backward uh, primer to um, amplify the heat gene. And uh, after PCR, we run our DNA fragment in the 1% agro gel, and it was visualized under the UV ray. Result and discussion. When we try to grow the dilubibrio in the host access, up to 20 hours, we did not get any growth. The morphological and the behavior of the uh, the, of the cell after the 20 hour was similar to the attack phase of the PYE. Although it does not grow, but it's, uh, the cell remained motile and could form the plaque in the double layer agar plating. And in conclusion, we conclude that in the extract, it may some active component may be missing, which we don't know. And maybe there are physical barrier against the attachment and the or penetration is likely uh, limitation in the case of the host structure which are present in the two membrane system. But in the second experiment with the ghost, we got a significant uh, number of dilubibrio grow as a host in independent. Uh, the morphological change was observed after the four hour. We see uh, uh, the elongated cell after approximately after double size, and after four to six hour, next four to six hour progressive. Uh, elongation take and in 12 to 13 hours there was significant uh, elongation and after 16 hour the the elongated uh, cell diminishes indi indicating that the uh, division start to occur and after 20 hour there was no long form was observed that it, uh, indicate that a complete multiple multiple fusion fusion already taken place for enumeration of elongated cell, as I mentioned, we use the cyber green staining. By cyber green staining, we found about the 30 percent of the cell elongated, and which was 15 to 30 uh, 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 more than the initial size of the of the dilubibrio, and uh, it was 15 to 45 micrometer in length. But in the case of the ghost, in the control, we did not found the any growth up up to 20 hour. 
for counting uh, for counting the viable viable count after the complete multiple fusion we use the double layer agar plating and uh, uh, we found about uh, in the host uh, uh, ghost with the 3 mg protein we found the 5 5.1 into 10 to power 8 pfu per ml which was five fold in than the initial uh, count but in the hepes we did not found uh, increase in the number of PFU. As uh, I mentioned that um, uh, it, uh, it elongated for the 15 uh, to 45 micrometer in length and they give about 15 to 30 progeny per elongated so cell. So, and we mentioned that it grow 30 percent. So we expected to uh, get the expected viable count of the 5.5 to 10 to power 4 uh, uh, PFU per ml but we get uh, only five fold, which was five to expected was five to ten fold, but we get only five, five fold. There was only increase. I mentioned it was increased only five fold, and in the expected was five to ten fold. Th this uh, this may uh, this may be due to the cell aggregation, and cell aggregated could be the counted as a single plague, uh, single plague, and it may be that uh, some cell may be the non-effective during the ghost uh, growth in the ghost so we get this we expect that uh, the difference is because of these two reason and as we seen that there was no growth in the host extract and even in the ghost cell embryo filled with the hepes and uh, the and uh, there but we see a significant growth in the extract the cell embryo uh, envelope filled with the extract this research give clue that at least two active component are present uh, with one may be in the extract and another in the cell embryo which together trigger the growth of the Dallo Vibrio as a host independently. And in 1991, Gray and Ruby also suggested at least two distinct signal required for intraperiplasmic growth, one which trigger the uh, uh, differentiate from the attack phase to the growth phase and another for the DNA replication. And another reason may be the cell can, uh, Dallo Vibrio can sense the envelope for the signal tran transduction and it may uh, feel a uh, suitable physical attachment or penetration with the ghost as like a uh, intraplasmic growth, but which was lacking in the extract. And it may, the ghost feel with the um, extract may provide the favorable niche which fit without the completion similar uh, explanation was given by socket and lambert in 2004 and selling and quantity quantity 1986 uh, reported that the for the uh, irre irre irreversible attachment there is the need of the coarse sugar of the host lipopolysaccharide as we know in the case of the host extract there was no cell envelope but in the in the in case of the uh, cell, in, uh, in the case of the ghost, there was present of the liposaccharide, so they maybe can initiate the growth of the telobibri as in the absence of the host. And in the previous study, I mentioned that uh, there was some growth in the extract uh, around five percent, and I and that the extract uh, and they found, uh, they reported that the active component which. Uh, uh, in trigger the growth in the extract was non dilegible heat stable, resistant to DNAs or RNAs, and there were protein like compounds which were 10 to 20 kilo Dalton. Analysis of the host interaction uh, locus and uh, PCR of the heat locus so of the so the same length for the host uh, dependent and host independent this means that they, uh, the heat locus was all was on uh, there was the on alter heat locus and uh, it which indicated the common 42 deletion found in the host independent stand may not be present and similar result was also re reported by barrel and Zukovic 2001 and Badina 2008 they also found the host independent with the on alter heat locus so in conclusion 
uh, as I mentioned, two membrane lifestyle is a challenging system for the research. So host independent, uh, growing the host independent in the absence of the host can more uh, enable for to genetic analysis and to study the developed hybrid biology. And in the and this ghost uh, ghost system is a new host uh, ghost is a new host free system where we uh, got the 30 percent of growth and this uh, can be used to study the effect of the various treatment of the frequency of the SI cell development and it can add a study of developed vibrio biology as well as set a new site on the factor contributing to the host independent development. The as the potential application of the Delib Vibri offer an ex exciting avenue for the further research and may one day form, form a part of new generation and antibiotic microbial therapy and biological and agent for the human, animal and plant pathogen. In future, you may visit a doctor and prescribe a Delib Vibri therapy to combat your infection. Last, I thanks to Professor Edward Zukovic and my donor, Johnny Fraser Memorial Scholarship, uh, uh, or Rotom PhD student from my lab, Prem Cordell, MSc student, and all the Zukovic lab membrane. And, uh, and lastly, I thanks a lot to the Ottawa Center for Agriculture Biotechnology members and the Department of Plant Pathology and the Microbiology of the Hebrew University. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Okay, uh, Amit. I want. I wonder. You worked uh, in these uh, experiments, uh, trying to assess the uh, protein extracts mm -hmm. and uh, and ghost. Mm -hmm. You worked with a strain that is host independent, or, no, we or no? The, we with the host dependent strain. Host dependent strain. Yeah. Okay, so this explain how how you ha cannot see grow. With the protein extract, yes. so, but but how 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 you explain? Because in in, in your results you show that uh, using the protein extract you don't see grow, okay, but you do see uh, you, you you have a strong cyber green uh, staining mm -hmm. uh, in contrast to the buffer, right? That you don't see the uh, a strong uh, staining. Sorry. Uh, you see, you show your, in your results that you don't have uh, growth yes, yes. of the delovibrio in With the oil. protein extract. Okay. Um, but you do see a strong uh, okay. cyber green staining. No, no. Cy uh, means in the host extent we found the not growth. But while we put the uh, growth the delovibrio in the cell envelope filled with the extract, uh, we found the growth for counting the elongated cell, we use the cyber green staining. But is, is from these experiments, I mean, you, you, you took cells, f uh, so maybe I, I lost something. The, the picture that you, sh that you show, the comparison between uh, uh, cells from the protein extract and the EPES, okay, okay. Uh, with cyber green, Wh when you did the cyber green staining. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, in, in yeah the, this previous this one. the previous one. The previous one, I think. Okay, this one. As I mentioned that after uh, 12 to 13 hours, there was the significant elongated growth. So we try to figure out the what is the percentage of the elongated uh, the cell. Then we take the cell suspension of the 13 to 12 hour. Then we uh, take uh, in 100 microliter uh, suspension, we put the one ml cyber green for 15 minutes and we observe under the EP fluorescent microscope. Ah, okay, this is in the ghost system. Yeah, this is the ghost system, and this is the ghost with the control, uh, with mm. the buffer. Okay. Uh, now, do, do you have, do you know, or maybe from, from the literature, 
what is the function of the heat gene? What, what, what does, what it encodes? Okay, uh, heat, uh, in the heat gene is only a, a single open reading frame, uh, frame in a heat locus, which are uh, uh, cause a lot of mutation. Mutation, uh, there is a, like a uh, insertion mutation, deletion mutation. But we have uh, the common uh, mutation is the 42 base pair deletion. Uh, so it is uh, the heat locus is uh, in previous study they show that the mutation in the heat locus is a factor uh, for the contributing the host dependent to host independent. Yeah, no, but my question is if you know from the annotation of this gene, okay. uh, which kind of protein it encodes. It's a gene, right? So it probably encodes a protein. Yes, yes. So you know which function this protein has. Uh, uh, if I don't know, a regula regulatory protein or, or a, a, a whatever, a, 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 a outer membrane protein or, a, or maybe an unknown protein, maybe a, a hypothetical protein. It can be may, a high percentage of, of bacterial pro uh, mm -hmm. genes are, are annotated as unknown protein. May maybe there is no answer oh. to my question, but the question is okay. just for curiosity, if you know as far as I don't know, but uh, when I uh, read the literature and even for the extract, while the, they found some growth, they did not mention the what type of protein. They just re say that protein-like compound. So I have no idea about that. Well, but, but this is when you. This is the the signal, right? That is, that is in. I mean, the, the signal that may be from the host. Yes. That is inducing the host-independent yes. phenotype. Okay. There's something different. I I mean to the. What, 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 what is the function of this gene in the lobibrio? Then when, when you delete 42 base pairs, okay. it becomes host independent. I have no idea. Huh? No idea. No, no, it, it, maybe no one has some idea. I'm just asking you. I, I <laughs> it's study, I, I yeah, I studied the, uh, the <coughs> paper, but it does not mention about the proteomic, uh, what type of expression, but they just meant they used to look the, the what type of the mutation occur. Uh, I just I found in, the, in case of the host, uh, developing the host independent strain. But maybe there is a, a while developing in the uh, host depend in the life cycle of host dependent. There may be some uh, some uh -huh. working, but okay. I don't know. How. Okay, and now now the other question I had, uh, and you bring me to the right. No, no, no. Stay in this okay. in this slide because you brought it to this uh, slide. I want to show. How do you know, or, or from the literature, that one of these uh, signals? that are important for, for the predation and, and growth of, of the lovibro is, is a protein. I mean, you say it's a protein-like compound. You say it's non-dialyzable, heat-stable, uh, yes. resistance to RNAs yeah, and this DNAs. Is, uh, this is not from my experiment. No, no. Okay. I, I'm asking from the literature. Okay. <laughs> it's a okay. question from the literature. Okay. How do you know, or, or oh, okay. the people that this, did this work, that is a protein? Uh, what they did, uh, they first uh, take the extract and they put the DNA. And even the putting the DNA or RNA, they found the grow elongated cell in the extract. Well, so this can be a sugar, it can be a, a, a polysaccharide, a monosaccharide, right? It can be uh, many other compounds. I mean, it doesn't prove, it proves that it's maybe not RNA or DNA, okay. but not proves that it's a protein. Did they try pro protease, some pro pro proteolytic uh, enzyme that then they lost the activity or may maybe this is the... No. I found about, um, about this only D using the DNA and RNA experiment uh, in the experiment and they also try to dialyze the extract and they were the active component, they conclude that the active component may be non-dialyzable and they also treat with the heat uh, treatment. Okay. And it was not impacted by the heat. Okay. Maybe some other people want to make one. If I'm not wrong, then the life cycle of De La Vibrio is not well studied, yeah? Yeah. 
it's a uh, host dependent it is sturdy mm -hmm. but uh, the what cost the dependent to on uh, host Indep dependent it is uh, still in going research on and the you develop the method to establish the host pre system so you, by using your method you developed, now is it possible to study the life cycle, life cycle of Della Vibrio in the means future? Uh, I don't know, means in the ghost it is a new system. It just uh, uh, can uh, add a uh, set new light in the what the uh, component, uh, uh, active component which uh, trigger the two uh, host dependent to independent and it can help the go, uh, to study the I mean, is your method is good enough to study the life cycle, or you need to develop some more? And in our lab, still this uh, this is a new research uh, project uh, developed in the Edward lab, and still uh, this uh, uh, this uh, research is going on by other researchers also. And okay, thank you. As you've shown in literature, there is growth of os independent de la vibrio in extract. Okay. But in your experiment, there was not establishment of host independent system. So okay. what was the difference between your experimental method and okay. the experiment followed by these guys? In host ex uh, in, okay. in one experiment, I saw that the Horjit, uh, it also, uh, get the 50 percent up in the equalized same equalized extract and we, we also try the same protocol in the first experiment we try the same protocol and we did not found the growth as i mentioned and we uh, uh, we concluded that th there may be use of host independent already mutated standard uh, strain which can grow in the uh, uh, complex media in absence of factor of the uh, from the host uh, uh, in fact in the absence of the host that means we there is possibility of using host independent mutant strain to study for host independent media means uh, yeah. they are already mutated from the other source also that so we can use okay thank you i mean i, I don't know if i continue your research with uh, edward in, in the lab but uh, i think you, it's I mean, you have a very, very nice finding with this uh, ghost system. I, I know a little bit this uh, from from Edward's work. Uh, the difficulties on this uh, Bdelo Vibrio, I mean, studying Bdelo Vibrio because of the dependence to the host and how it complicates working with two systems. So I would like, and, and this this uh, development of this uh, ghost system, when you see grow, I mean, it's, it's working with the host dependent uh, strain is really, really a nice uh, development. Uh, and my question is uh, uh, related to the discussion, where would you like to take your finding uh, ahead, okay, for, for the future? What, what would you like to do with this finding? What do you think you need to do to improve our uh, knowledge on, on the level of This now we do not know the what is the active component which trigger the SD to the host independent. So uh, we are uh, in our uh, lab. They are trying to uh, using the ghost new system to find out the the active component to to which cause the host dependent to uh, alter into the host independent growth. They are wow. trying to find, and the every signaling about they are going yeah. in the project. Okay, I think th this is uh, one one part, uh, and it's very important. But also, I think you have a now. Maybe I'm wrong, but m you you may have a, a great tool now to make uh, mutagenesis, to 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 make mutants of the Lovibrio on the background of the host dependent strain, because now you are working with just right one uh, pure cu culture of the Lovibrio is more easy to uh, manipulate it molecularly and then assess these mutants with the host, and uh, I think it's a a very good uh, development. You mentioned earlier that the Della Vibrio feeds on gram-negative bacteria. Okay. And as far as I know, they don't feed on gram-positive bacteria. So what makes the difference that they feed only on gram-negative bacteria, not the positive? Okay. 
bacteria. It's an introduction. You mentioned they feed on yeah. gram-negative bacteria. Especially the, uh, they are reported, uh, they usually feed to the gram-negative bacteria. Yeah. As far as I know, they don't feed on gram-positive. Yeah. yeah, it's right. But what makes the difference that they feed only on gram-negative bacteria? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. The next in your control of the ghost, okay. which you use, when you use only ghost, you find no growth. Okay. But when you use ghost with something protein extract inside, okay. you find good growth. Okay. So, uh, what do you think is the function of ghost? Because you mentioned the, I want to know it now. What do you think is the function of ghost, only the ghost? Okay, I just mentioned uh, that uh, in the extract it does not grow. And yes. even in the hepes, it does not grow. Yes. And uh, we think, in conclusion, we explain that there may be the two active component, mm -hmm. one may be in the cell envelope and another in the extract, which together trigger the growth of the, s for the signaling for the growth of the Danube Hebrew as a host independent. Thank you. Uh, a, a bit. Uh, it's not clear uh, to me. Mm. Ghost is a, a host free or this is no a no host ghost independent? I just mentioned ghost is a cell envelope of the bacteria which is obtained from the osmotic lysis, just cell cover. Okay. And we fill in, uh, in the cell envelope, we fill the again the protein extract of the E. coli. So in this case, um, maybe it may be because of the that envelope instead of the protein extract. Okay. Right? Uh, it may be enveloped, but when we put envelope and the buffer, we did not found the growth. Single, only the envelope filled with any without nutrient means buffer, we did not found growth. So we uh, concluded that the active uh, component of the uh, cell envelope and the extract together trigger the growth. Did you get? Yeah, you mentioned that this bacteria is very important, right? Beneficial. Yes. Okay. And the success of growing them on host-free system is less. Yes. Is there any possibility to grow them in another hostess, which are beneficial also? I mean, we have also g uh, bacteria in our guts and the like, right? Okay. What is the success on the? I mean, did you refer any literature on that? Means if it's not working in this, then. Means uh, for the host independent. Uh, to grow host independent or? No, you have tried on host independent case and the success is low. No, no, we try the host dependent to grow the as a host independent yes. in the extract. As mm. host independent and it's the success is low, right? Yes. But these bacteria are very important. Uh, yes. And what i is, I mean, what, i what is the possibility to grow them in other bacteria which are also, I mean, non-harmful for yeah. Uh, they are also fingers. grown in the, uh, with the pseudomonas also, uh -huh. and but they get on very few, like 5%, and uh, 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 even with the other bacteria, but the result is very low. And but the E. coli extract uh, means uh, in the E. coli, they, uh, they prefer the more E. coli, so th the, the most of the oh research. Right? Yes, so we are using the E. coli for the growing. So it can be used as a... Uh, uh, for a potential role in biocontrol agent. If, and there, there is some research also uh, in the uh, pseudomon uh, bacterial blight, they gave the efficient result while using the delivery also. Okay, uh, we have to go on with the next presentation. So thank you very much, Ami. Seems as if it's empty. Please, thank you very much. Zerai and Alem, please. Okay, so we go on with our next presentation.
Uh, the next uh, presenter will be Ram Kumar Shrestha uh, from Nepal. He is a bachelor in agricultural science uh, from uh, Tribhuvan University in Nepal. Uh, as uh, other members of the group, he also conducted uh, an agricultural training in the Arava International Center and uh, currently a, a master student in uh, the program here in Rehovot. Uh, Ram. Ram will present his work on the assessment of uh, growth in planta of uh, Acidovorax uh, citrullis type, five, type 4, uh, pilus and polar uh, flagellum mutants by diverse pathogenicity assays. Please, Ram. Thank you, Suki. Welcome to all of you in my presentation. Today I am going to present my research exercise. The title of my research exercise is Assessment of Growth in Planta of Acidovorax citrulli Type 4 pillars and Polar Flagellum Mutants by Diverse Pathogenicity Assay. This work was conducted under the guidance of Dr. Saul Burduman from Department of My um, Microbiology and Plant Pathology. Firstly, I want to introduce the plant pathogen Acidovorax citrulli and the disease caused by Acidovorax citrulli. It is a gram-negative and biotrophic pathogen by bacterium. It causes seedling blight and bacterial fruit blots of cucurbit. As you can see, the symptom of seedling blight in cucurbit plants, cucurbit seedling, it starts from the water soak spot, especially in the cotyledon, which uh, get enlarged and becomes necrotic, then later the plant will die like this. You can see the symptom in fruit also in various cucurbit fruits. Uh, it causes the uh, rotten cavity inside the fruit, causing fruit blots of cucurbit. During 19, late 1980s, there was huge outbreak of this disease in various states of United States. After that, it, the disease uh, took more importance and it get more, got more importance among the scientific community and research started intensively after that. And we know that from previous report it has huge yield loss potential and it is also reported that in conductive environment of high humidity and high, uh, with moderate temperature the disease comes devastating with 100% ill loss potential. So this disease is a very devastating disease of cucurbits. In other hand, the management of this disease is limited with the cultural management schemes and use of some compounds like copper-based compound, which has less efficacy to control this disease. So this disease is threatening disease for cucurbit industry to, in order to save the cucurbit industry from suffering from the uh, loss caused by this disease. We have to uh, develop new tools and techniques for management of this disease. In order to do so, we, have, we need to have detailed information and knowledge about the host pathogen and host pathogen interaction. When we look on the pathogen acetoboraxy truly and we we saw on the we see on the pathogen diversity at various parts of the world we can divide this pathogen into two distinct groups according to its genetic similarities and differences and biochemical utilization feature the group first is mainly associated with non watermelon types of cucurbit that is melon type of plants while the group second is mainly associated with watermelon type of plants and this pathogen depends upon the functional type 3 secretion system for pathogenicity and hypersensitivity response in host plants. That means when we alter the function, impair the functions of type 3 secretion system of this pathogen, pathogen will not be pathogenic anymore for its host plant and will uh, lose the ability to cause hypersensitivity response in its non-host plant. If we look on the morphology of this pathogen, it contain, contains single polar flagellum with basal body, hook, and the filament. Similarly, it con also contains the type 4 pili. It is a unique 
proteinaceous hair-like appendages generally extending from, from the pole of the cell. And it, the, the type 4 pili has unique capacity to extend its length and retract its length. It provides unique capacity to the bacterium. The, the bacterium is motile by means of polar flagellum in liquid medium polar flagellum and its helical motility, uh, helical movement provides swimming motility for the bacterium whereas pilus provide a unique flagella independent uh, motility which is known as twitching motility. For twitching motility, it extends its pilus, length of pilus added on the surface and retract towards it. So it moves forward in the direction of the uh, extending and retracting of the pilus. Beside motility, these pilus and flagellum are the multifunction appendages. It has multiple functions. These has multiple functions and acts as virulency determinants for many of pathogens. Literature suggests that in many of biotrophic and necrotrophic pathogenic bacteria, flagella are found to be required for invasion stage of uh, the host. In contrast, when we see on the Acetovoraxi truly and some other necrotrophic bacteria like Dictia didanti and Pectobacterium caratoroborum, these bacteria needs flagella for its full virulence. That means if we impair the function of flagella, the pathogen reduces its virulence in host plant. If we uh, talk about type 4 pili, this is also the multifunction appendage. Beside twitching motility, these appendages are involved in surface adherence to attach on the surface, colonization on it, biofilm formation, or special type of colonial growth of the bacterium on the surface, uh, solid surface, genetic material uptake, that means uh, horizontal transfer of gene and the uh, transfer of resistance genes from one bacteria to another bacteria and the virulence of bacteria. Particularly in Acetovoraxid, really, type 4 pilas are involved in surface addition and biofilm formation or mutagenesis based studies conducted in our lab had demonstrated the role of type 4 pilas and polar flagellum for the vi virulence of this pathogen. That means these appendages are necessary for virulence of this pathogen in host plant. So our objective to conduct this, uh, this study was to assess the growth in planta of and symptom induction ability of uh, type 4 pili and polar flagellum mutants of Acetovoraxi truly in comparison with wild type strand. That means we wanted to compare the growth ability in planta of this mutant strand with the wild type, plant, wild type pathogen and also the symptom induction ca capacity of those. For this study, we took two, uh, three mutants line, two from uh, type 4 pili mutants and one for polar flagellum mutants with a wild type strand that is M6. M6 was member from group host that is related to the melon or melon loving type of Acetovoraxi truly, which was isolated from melon fruit plant, melon fruit from Israel, and all the other mutant strain were generated on the background of this M6. The first type of pili mutant M6M, denoted as M6M, was generated on the background of M6, which was impaired in PLT functions, PLEM functions. And gene of PLEM functions, this gene encode for type 4 pili assembly protein. So without the type 4 pili assembly protein, this M6M strain is unable to produce any uh, type 4 pili in its surface. So it, is, it lacks type 4 pili at all. Similarly, type uh, M6T strain was impaired in gel, uh, gene PLT which encoding a protein that carries nucleotide, nucleotide binding domain required for twisting motility. So it does produce the type 4 pili, but the type 4 pili is like a paralyzed and it cannot perform the twisting motility. Instead of it, the uh, strand was also hyperpiliated. That means the number of pili on the surface 
was more than the M6, that wild type parental type of strain. The flagellum mutant M6 flag was impaired in field C gene, which encodes for flagellin subunit of the filament of flagella. That means it produces the flagella without the filament. So it is it produces naked flagella and doesn't contain swimming motility due to lack of the filament unit. These bacterial strain were grown in nutrient agar. In case of uh, mutant strain, we add canamycin for selective media and we grew them in 28 degrees centigrade for our uh, experiments. As a plant, a host plant, we choose melon and Ophir cultivar of melon, which is found to be susceptible for this disease, and these, uh, the, the plant were, plants were grown in greenhouse condition from 25 to 28 degrees centigrade. For seedling inoculation, we prepared seedlings of Ophir cultivar of melon in greenhouse for one week in plain moss pit. For inoculation of this, we prepared 24 hour fresh culture of above mentioned strain and the culture were, was, were suspended, cultures were suspended in sterile water and adjusted to the 10 to the power 8 CFU per ml. Then five microliter of droplet of 10 to the power 8 CFU per ml of bacterial suspension was placed at the base of the seedling, at the base of the seedling, stem of seedling, and and then 25 gauze needle was passed through the middle of the seed, middle of the droplet uh, for inoculation. Then instantly we removed the droplet from the uh, site of inoculation by towel paper. For seedling death assay, this, uh, uh, this experiment was designed to follow the disease development and symptom induction capacity of different mutant strains in comparison to wild type strain in this experiment sterile water was inoculated as negative control as inoculation of um, the bacterial strains and seedling death was followed up to 12 to 14 days after inoculation. For bacterial growth follow-up in plant, plant system, uh, we designed two experiments. One is bottom inoculation experiment and next one is top inoculation experiment. In bottom inoculation experiment, we did inoculation as described in previous section. Seedling inoculation was done as described in previous, um, previous section. And we took one centimeter piece of steam from site of inoculation. Here we can see the site of, sorry. Here you can see the site of inoculation. We took the one cm piece from the site of inoculation, sterilized with 70% ethyl alcohol. Then the piece was homogenized in sterile water and serially diluted and plated in NA plate, that is nutrient auger plate per bacterial colony count. Similarly, we took, uh, we took another piece of one centimeter piece of steam piece from four cm above the uh, site of inoculation and bacterial estimation was done uh, as mentioned in above. And the concentration of bacteria was estimated at day zero, that is day of inoculation, two, four, and six day after, days after inoculation. As I already mentioned, this is the second, uh, second, experiment, to, uh, second experiment to follow the bacterial growth in planta. In this experiment, we did all the techniques similar, but just opposite, just the reverse the order of the inoculation site. We did inoculation on the top of the, just below the cotyledon leaves, and we followed the bacterial concentration from site of inoculation and forcium below the site of inoculation. We took the sample similar as before and plated them in nutrient agar plate. Here we took concentration of bacteria in day zero, day two, day four, and day six after inoculation. In foliage inoculation, we prepare uh, plantlets, small plantlets having three true leaves by, uh, by growing them in 
plain moss feed for one week. Then after the, the seedlings were transplanted in a media containing one is to one is to one, vermiculite and uh, moss feed and moss feed and sand in one is to one is to one ratio and allowed to grow for uh, the grow the plant up to three true leaf stage. For inoculation of those uh, mini plants led bacterial suspension of about 10 to the power 6 CFU per ml was prepared by 24 hour fresh culture of bacterial strain and those, sus those suspension were supplemented with 0.045% of seal weight in order to reduce the surface tension during inoculation. And melon plants, we, uh, these three true leaves melon plant were dipped inside the suspension for three minutes then these melon plant were allowed to grow, allowed to dry inside in the greenhouse condition for bacterial estimation, and then, then we, uh, we estimated bacterial concentration from the melon plant. For bac uh, bacterial estimation, we took 12 leaf discs, 12 leaf discs of 7 mm diameter. As you can see from picture, we took leaf discs like this from four from each true leaves, four leaf discs from each true leaves. And those, those discs were weighted, surface sterilized with 1% of sodium hypochlorite and plated as described above in another, our previous experiments. Here we have results from seed de seedling death assay. We did uh, inoculation with fairly uniform, fairly uniform concentration of bacterium. And uh, we have results from this and in x-axis, in x-axis we plot the uh, day after inoculation, and in y-axis the days of uh, death of seedling, percentage death of seedling. As you can see, the uh, death of seedling started earlier and reached uh, maximum level, uh, and have much more seedling death in M6 strand, that is wild type of strand, wild type of strand in all, all remaining. Uh, mutant strain, the death percentage of the seedling was lower than the M6 strain. This is result from one, hour, one of our experiments, but we have similar result from multiple experiments, so we can r rely on this data. And we, in exper during experiment, we saw that the symptom induction ability of the, the among the mutant strain were different. M6, M started symptom earlier, and the death, even you can see the death of the, death of the seedling were started earlier in M6, M strand uh, among the M60 and M6 flag. There is, that means there is little bit difference between M6, M, M6 flag and M60 uh, during the symptom induction capacity. That means these strands are different. Here I have to mention that, mention that you, that the M6, M, and M60 was impaired in polar, uh, in function of type 4 pili. In addition to that, a research in our uh, lab found that the M6, M and M60 was also impaired in function, uh, also altered in function of the polar flagellum. And M6, M was able to swim faster than the M6 wild type of strain in in vitro conditions. So it is quite reasonable to have uh, higher Seed, uh, seedling the symptoms, higher seedling symptoms, and uh, earlier seedling symptoms in M6 M than other rest of two. Rest of two. Similarly, in M60, the the flagellar functions was also altered, but in this M60 strain, the flagellar functions were negatively altered. That means the uh, we didn't see. a uh, sorry. The, the report says that previous finding that s says that the M60 was unable to swim in in vitro condition and the swimming motility was altered. So it is also reasonable to think that the M60 strain has less symptom induction capacity due to uh, impairment in both flagella and the type 4 pili. So we can say that the both of uh, this mm, appendix has functions during virulence in pathogen, uh, in host. These are few pictures from six day after inoculation. You can see clearly see the, sorry. 
clearly see the difference between the uh, uh, wild type of strain and mutated strain with control. There is not such a difference between mutated strain as you can see here in six day, but uh, the wild type of strain is highly virulent in comparison to other. Pro uh, these are the results from bacterial growth follow-up from seedling inoculation when we inoculate seedlings at the bottom of the seedlings and this is the you know, result from the site of inoculation, bacterial population from site of inoculation where we uh, inoculate the seedling. At the day of inoculation, we don't have significant difference between the size of inoculation. At three days after inoculation, we find the significantly lower population of M6 flag. At day six and day nine, the M6 population was lower than the uh, M6. M6 T population was lower than the M6, sorry. And M6, young population was fairly uniform and there was not a uh, difference between M6 M and M6. When we look on the, um, for look be, uh, for CM above the site of inoculation, the difference between strain was more stronger at the site, um, for CM above the site of inoculation. Here we find at three day after inoculation, all the strain were lower than the M6 strain, that is wild type of strain. That means the mutated strain has lower growth ability within planta. In day six, the strain M6 was able to cope the situation and growth was similar as M6, M60, uh, M6F was similar as M6, but two mutants line M6M and M60 was lower than the M6 parental line. At day nine, sorry, at day nine, the M60 was unable to do uh, the unable to do growth rate as done by the M6 strain. So here, the more, more important thing is where the pattern of the growth of bacterium, not the when does it has lower population or higher. The pattern shows that clearly shows that the uh, mutant strain has lower growth rate in plant. So the the pop population of this uh, mutant strain were lower in the plant. When we look on the uh, data from the data from the inoculation at the top, we find similar result like uh, similar result like sorry uh, like reduction in growth rate of the bacterium uh, bacterium. We didn't find any significant difference between the inoculum size and the uh, population size at two day after inoculation, but there was significantly loss, less population of M M60 and M6 flag at four day after inoculation, four days after inoculation. Similarly, at six days after inoculation, M6, uh, M6 M was really lower than M6, that is parental strand. Uh, similarly, in uh, Fortium below the site of inoculation, we find this result at two, day, two days after inoculation, there was not significant difference between those strains, but four days after inoculation, M60 was lower than M6 strain, and at six days after inoculation, M6 M and M6 flag was lower than, uh, the, lower than the parental strain. So, here we can clearly see that the growth rate of this mutant strain were lower than the uh, parental strain in plant. And uh, it is reasonable to think that the growth is rate is lower and the seedling death percent is also lower. So the, there is correlation between death of seedling and the growth rate of a mutant strain in plant tissue. Despite of many effort in foliage inoculation, we failed to have uh, we failed to follow the growth rate of bacterium in plant tissue. And in addition to this, the uh, type 4 pili mutants uh, behave something differently and we couldn't follow the development of this bacterial strand within plant tissue because the uh, less consistency of type 4 pilus mutants. But in a, from our experiment, we clearly see that out of three experiment, from two experiments, we find the uh, variation in inoculum 
initial infiltrated inoculum size of the M6 flag and M6 M within plant tissue. And here is the difference between when we inoculate with the fairly uniform uh, population of fairly uniform size of the uh, inoculum, there was difference, significant difference between the uh, infiltrated population of the M6 flag and M6 M. That shows that there is some advantages of having flagella for M6 over the M6 flag to enter inside the plant tissue during our inoculation procedure. That means the M6 flag was actively inserting it inside the uh, plant tissue and uh, get protected against our surface sterilization by hiding it inside the uh, leaf tissue. You can clearly see that the difference between we can find we find the difference between M6 flag and M6 strain. The M6 strain the day after two two days after inoculation, the M6 strain inoculated plant looks really poor with yellow pale yellow leaves, and M6 flag was still looking healthy because of uh, this difference of initial inoculum. As a conclusion. What we can say, we can conclude from our experiment is plasilum and type 4 pili mutants have reduced virulence and in steam inoculation of melon seedlings. In seedling inoculation, this result was also uh, proved by Ophir, experiment of, of Ophir in seed, uh, in seed inoculation techniques. In so we can say that the flagellum and type 4 pilus mutants have reduced virulence in steam inoculation of melon seedling. From previous reports, we know that the growth ability of this mutant strain is not different from the growth ability of the wild type parental strain in in vitro condition. However, we find the different growth ability of this uh, mutant strain in plant tissue. That that's why we can say that even though the malfunction of these appendages does not affect the multiplication of acidobarac citrulli in minimal media and in vitro condition, it reduces the capacity of pathogen to proliferate in plant tissue uh, in planta. From our uh, foliage inoculation, we can say that the flagellum of acidobarac citrulli might has role during foliage inoculation procedure we followed. That means the uh, flagella of M60, M6, sorry, M6 has advantages o over the flagella mutant um, strain during our inoculation procedure to enter inside the uh, plant tissue. In e steam inoculation, the effect of loss of appendages are stronger on the bacterial population far from the site of inoculation. As you saw in our experiment, the difference between the bacterial strain in population was stronger from the far, at the far point from the site of inoculation when we moved forcium up or forcium below the site of inoculation. The difference in growth in growth rate of this pathogen is correlated with the seedling death, as we saw in our result. And late build up of pathogen population in seedling are not effective to cause the death of seedling, which might be due to reduced vulnerability of seedling with increasing age. Here I have to mention you that the with increasing age of seedlings, the seedling loses its vulnerability to disease, this disease, so the uh, at advanced stage of go seedling growth, the bacterial population developed inside the seedling will not have pronounced effect and will not cause pronounced disease symptom within uh, in the seedling. So we can say that the late build of, of population of mag this uh, mutated strain within uh, plant, host plant, is not able to cause uh, the seedling death caused by original M6 parental strain. Thank you. Thank you, Ram.
Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was very nice to watch. I just have a question um, about the inoculum concentrations in your results. Yeah. That you did a comparison of the effect of the mutations on the bacteria, yeah. right? Which one? And uh, uh, yeah, it can be any one of these graphs. Like, yeah. So why are the concentrations different? I mean, if you want to compare the mutations, couldn't you do it like in the same concentration? So. A nice question, but what we have to consider here is we, we firstly, for, for arranging the, for uh, equalizing the concentration at initial stage, we uh, measured the OD, that is optical density of the bacterial suspension, and we mm, plate the bacterial suspension in a plate. Then we, af after we count the bacterial co colony from the bacterial suspension, for the bacterial suspension to measure the uh, concentration. So we cannot find the accurate concentration that is 1 into 10 to the power 8 for all of the bacterial concentration, or all of the strain at once, because it is like a uh, estimation by looking at the OD of the uh, solution. So, so you measure it after So yeah, I measured at the day of inoculation. And I count two days after inoculation, the actual uh, concentration of the strain were counted two days after inoculation. So the, there is difference. So we cannot perfectly adjust the concentration. And I have another question. Okay. Um, that I see, I mean, I understand the benefits in agriculture applications because if we have bacteria that have these mutations, so they're going to, the growth is going to, uh, you're going to have a, it's going to postpone the growth, so you have an um, agricultural uh, advantage to it. But how do you do this? Like, how do you do this mutation, the pathogenic bacteria? It is not a way of thinking to cause, uh, to make the mutation on, on bacteria to have agricultural benefit. It's the way of studying the role of the type 4 pili. So if we know the type 4 pili and its role during the host pathogen interaction, and if we have some chemicals and some tools to uh, like paralyze the type 4 pili in um, system and to uh, reduce the number of type 4 pili and to dysfunction the type 4 pili if we have chemical in future, we can apply it as a weak point of the bacterium. Mm -hmm. So we can hit on the target of weak point of bacterium so we, have, we will have some technique to overcome the disease. Well, your steam inoculation and foliage inoculation, uh, steam and seal, steam inoculation work, but foliage inoculation does not work, yeah? Foliage inoculation was not working. Why it, it didn't it work? It is, uh, it is long to say that uh, mm -hmm. the foliage inoculation, why it did not work, because in foliage inoculation, it is long procedure. It takes a lot of time. And we have data from some of foliage inoculation, but I suspect some, mm, some uh, uh, faults in within it, so I didn't present it here. Because I started foliage inoculation after, 12, uh, after 8, 11 a.m. from morning, and I inoculate the plant till uh, six and six and half p uh, six and half uh, at evening, so there was difference between the time of inoculation, and we cannot we inoculate bacterium in sequence order, sequential order. First m six, m six m like this. So we cannot uh, assume that the stomata open at during all the uh, hour of the day are not similar. So it might have advantages for one bacterium to enter inside uh, the leaf tissue when it was inoculated at afternoon time, while the uh, bacterial strain inoculated at late evening will have less advantages. So I cannot use this data anymore for the uh, analysis here. So I didn't present the data. Well, and one more question. And in seedling death essay, 
you waited to see the symptom for 12 and 12 14 days yeah yeah i followed the symptoms. how you decide within 12 what are the basis to say that it will die in tw 12 to 14 days does it happen in commercial scale that the plants if infected infected with acidovirax citrally it will die in 12 to 14 days here we follow the sibling death um, up to 12 to 14 days and we clearly see the death seedling and thriving seedlings but in commercial uh, nurseries the initial inoculation is really lower as i mentioned that the vulnerability of the seedling get decreases with increasing seedling seedling age that means if the initial in inoculation is really high it builds up its population really lower uh, lower rate in lower rate and the build up of population will be later in later stage so it it is not efficient to uh, well efficient to develop the <coughs> such a devastating uh, seedling death in commercial uh, field that is the weak point we have because if we have inoculation inocu initial uh, inoculum in seedlings and we find the seedling that it's okay we can discard the seedling from the uh, transplant house but if it's it is latent inside the seedling and we don't observe any symptom it uh, there is possibility of transferring these seedlings into the field so it will cause de devastating huge loss in field so this is weak point we have here okay thank you uh, maybe i think uh, you can do some kind of correction for the variation in initial inoculum concentration if you see this data M6 has some um, higher value of initial uh, inoculum concentration. In your result also consistently M6 had a higher um, value in most of your uh, slides. In shoot inoculum also, I yeah. think there was a variation. Maybe I, I'm not sure whether this small uh, variation might have some significant effect on your result. In the shoot inoculum also there was a <laughs> variation Variation. In the, in the Maybe you can do some correction for the, this initial version. As I already mentioned, that it is uh, very hard. I'm, it is almost impossible to find the exact inoculation size, inoculum size here, here, and here. So we have to rely on the estimate on the day after day of inoculation. Uh, we have to rely on the OD optical density of the solution, but. Uh, it is not only in sorry well, I want to show a thing it is not only the matter of uh, inoculum size here the main thing is the how much bacteria are inside the uh, plant tissue at the day of inoculation either it is becoming high and sorry it is uh, high and uh, we find uh, purely uniform statistically uniform population here it's okay because the during the puncturing of the steam there might be difference because of working with the hand uh, sometime more duration of puncturing may have more advantage for for this bacterium instead of this bacterium which has higher concentration at starting so we rely we mainly interfere we mainly rely on this data not in this data so this data is showing that there is not significant difference between the inoculum concentration. This is just for showing. If we have inoculum concentration equal here, d it doesn't make effect on it. Here we don't have a statistical difference, but what we can say here is it's not only from my experiment it is also from previous experiment foliage in, uh, in uh, d done by Ophirvar he compared this one mutants with this one with uh, uniform concentration statistically uniform concentration uh, of inoculum at day zero and he find the similar results so we can s rely on this and it is from multiple experiment, we still saw the similar trend, so we can rely on it. Okay, good. Uh, just mine is a, a kind of suggestion yeah. to 
maybe you can try a, a, a kind of uh, correction at the for the variation like covariance or some kind of yeah as as a uh, as ram mentioned um i mean this and he worked in this specific system but uh, and many other experiments with similar conditions were done in the lab were done in the lab and uh, i i wish <laughs> I really because uh, I think uh, Ram explained well the limitations that well. I, I want to tell in many other uh, many other people, including in the lab, but from other groups, even don't look at the concentration of the inoculum. They just rely on the OD measurements. And I think it's good that the uh, Ram presents the data on the concentration of that he tested it, and he presented the data on the concentration of the inoculum. Now, when I see seven. 0.2 to 10 to the 8, and 6.80 t to the 10 to the 8. I mean, 80 10 to the, the, the 8. It's. I mean, everybody that works in uh, phytobacteriology says that it's not difference on it. I mean, and and also time zero. There are not statistical. There is not a statistical significance, and you can see even from the time zero point that the M6 flag, okay, uh, uh, at time zero. The, it's the, the the purple one. It's higher than uh, than the green one. I mean, even that you can see. Uh, so, but but it's not it's not. I mean, there is no meaning to this uh, because it's not significant. And and these these results are I mean repeated in in all the experiments uh, done by by Ram. So so I think it's I mean it's it's uh, it's not not they are not. If you will say that. That is, M6 has 7.2 to 10 to the 8, and one of the strains has uh, 6.8 to the 10 to the 7, not to 10 to the 8, or even 2 to the 10 to the 8. I mean, I would uh, take care of it. And I, in fact, this is one of the reasons why uh, Ram is not showing the results of the foliage in uh, in uh, inoculation experiments, is that he didn't uh, have... Uh, uh, I mean, at the time zero, he, he see that there were some problems with this system. So he preferred not to, because then he found that it's something that was related or to the preparation of the inoculum or to the inoculation procedure and not to the uh, real difference in virulence between the, the strains, okay? So it's only just to, to stress this uh, point. But I want to make just one question because I, I did many questions to, to Ram and we worked together, so I don't think... I mean, many of the questions that I, I already asked him, but, but just one question that I didn't is that uh, wh when you look to this picture mm. and, and, and you can see, you, okay, in, in all the experiments that you show in seeding inoculation in the top and in the bottom and looking at the top and the bottom, you see some significant difference between uh, some mutants and the wild type. Yeah. Okay, and there is a clear trend that the mutants are impaired in, in growth and movement, okay, in the seedling. But the difference, even s significant, uh, statistically significant, are not so dramatic in these experiments, okay? You can see some, uh, there's not so dramatic okay. difference. But <laughs> the, the difference in seedling dead I, are really dramatic, uh, if yeah. you remember the other graph. So it doesn't seem to me, that it doesn't seem to me to be only a matter of, of bacterial counts in the tissue. Maybe there is something else there. Yeah. Do you think? Wha yeah. what, what can be? I mean, not, not only a matter of numbers. As, as I mentioned that these appendages are multifunctional appendages, not only used for colonization, not only used for biofilm formation, it also used for the effective transport from the uh, pathogen to the host so it, it can manipulate the host system to for the benefits of the pathogen. So it can cause the death of seedling. So the colonization itself is not uh, uh, making such a dramatic effect between the M6 strand and, M6, uh, and, and the rest of mutant strand. There might be the uh, possibility of uh, non -abling, being non-able to unable to transfer the effective molecules within a host system, so it, it will not be able to manipulate the host system to cause it die and 
take it benefit before um, during multiplication so this also causes the the rate of low rate of the multiplication might be also cause of the less ability to transport effector to the plant system so it will not derive enough nutrient for growth in plant tissue so there might be the reason so we need to look on it for further research we have time for a last question, please. Here, yeah. as earlier Birdman mentioned that even if there is significant, statistically, even if M6, the concentration of M6 and X M6N, even if there is significantly, significantly, if there is a difference in concentration, it doesn't make difference, as far as I understand, as, mm. in, as Birdman mentioned earlier. But in your data, even after six days and nine days, there is no difference between M6M, M6T, and M6 flat. Mm. But there is difference in t between M6 and M6T. Yes. So how could you say that there is, you say that there is difference in graph but not difference in concentration. Even if it is different in concentration, you say it doesn't make difference. But when you come to the graph, then you say there is difference. So this also might not be the difference then if you say there is no difference in concentration then in your result if there is different concentration then this small difference also might not be significant then if i well understood your question here the i well understood your question what is make difference here is the trend not particularly in which days the which bacterium concentration is lower if you look at the this data here is, is clear picture of and clear trend of lower growth of the mutant strain in comparison to the m6 strain what we look here is the more in trend of the bacterial growth in in the popula in the plant not the at which days which bacterial concentration will be higher and which co bacterial concentration will be lower so the uh, we look for the trend of the bacterial concentration and it is also from multiple experiments so we can rely on it. Multiple experiments were showing the similar result. Uh, in other experiments, w what we, uh, I did not present here, you can find the difference between the M6 and M6F in these days, not in these days. It doesn't make difference, only the looking at the trend of the bacterial growth. Since the bacterial count doesn't make the difference? But we look the trend not the specific date, not in the specific date. No, I just mean to say the concentration of bacteria, mm. does it make difference or not? Yeah, we, we are looking for it, so it, is, it makes difference, no? We are looking for it, the it growth, of growth of type of PLI mutants in plant. No. So we are looking for it, it no? Make, if the concentration of bacteria makes difference, then if it, you said uh, in concentration here it doesn't make difference, but here it makes difference. So I what we look here that. is, uh, the not here, but here. In the day of inoculation, this uh, thing says us that in day of inoculation, we have not significantly, statistically not significantly uh, different population of this strain within plant tissue. It is outside the plant tissue, so it is more rely on our result more rely on this not in this it is within plant tissue we don't have significant difference between the bacterial concentration here so it's okay. uh, well mm -hmm. to interpret here i will take the chairman right to raise another question after mm -hmm. the last one uh, maybe it's either to you or to Saul. is there uh, actually it interacts with the first question that evelyn asked is there a way to utilize such mutants of the bacteria in order to interfere with the uh, pathogenic effect of the uh, wild type population of the bacteria? For me? I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will try to answer your question. What I'm, I want to say here is bacterial bacteria has dynamic nature in uh, in environment bacteria has dynamic nature it can give up its resistance gene whatever it wants to give another bacterium and it can take from other so 
uh, in environment, bacteria are accumulating the gene that uh, that get gives benefit to it, not the not the weakness. It gives right. it takes strength. So right. However, if you grow these bacteria, these mutants in lab and mm -hmm. and spread them in the field, will they compete with the natural population? Will they inter will they interfere the the uh, pathogenicity of of the natural population? In case of in case of type 4 pili mutants, in case of type 4 pili mutants, I don't think so. This will also, still this pathogen has pathogenicity. That means this pathogen is pathogenic. Still, it doesn't possess virulence, mm -hmm. enough virulence as the uh, one type of strain do. But in case of type, type 3 secretion system, if we interfere the type 3 secretion system, the pathogen will remain will dismiss its pathogenicity, will not be pathogenic anymore. So there is possibility of using the type 3 secretion mutants line as a bicontrol agent for the control of this bacterium. It is just a possibility. And uh, one report from the China last year, I, if I remember well, from China last year, they reported that there is little bit efficacy of using type 3 secretion system mutants as a bicontrol agent for acid or acetrally. Little bit. It is not well. Sorry. No, the answer is, is right. I mean, if we spread these mutants, these specific mutants into the fields, uh, we will go to jail. <laughs> because <laughs> they are still pathogenic and, and uh, okay. But, but potentially we can use or, or think or test the, the use of of non-pathogenic mutants, or even other Acidovorax avenae. I mean, there was also some work from the group, one group in the U.S. that they tested uh, uh, some Acidovorax related, uh, 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 I mean, some related bacteria from Acidovorax genus that are pathogenic on other plants, but not on watermelon and melon, and they work well uh, to some uh, level uh, in, in some kinds of uh, infections, but. I mean, there is no way that they will get permission to spread this, these strains because they are pathogenic to other plants. Even many uh, biological control agents, uh, the, for example, a fa famous uh, genus is uh, Burholderia. Uh, okay, that there are um, uh, there are some some very efficient Burhol at least at greenhouse conditions, very effective strains of Burholderia. But, but there is no way that they, they will get permission because there are some other bull that are not necessarily these ones that are opportunistic pathogens of uh, human. So, so these, are, these are ready enough to, uh, I mean, to uh, 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 impede their optimization, even that these uh, potential strains were not shown to be uh, pathogenic, on, on, on pathogenic on animals. So there, I mean, from the, uh, uh, the there is a potential, but w but when you are using up even type three secretion mutants, uh, they can say no. But in the field, they can uh, get from horizontal transfer type three secretion from other bacteria and then become pathogenic and maybe even strongly pathogenic. So, so it's it's a problem to to use. Okay, okay. thanks, Ram, and take thanks to everybody. Uh, we already took some of our uh, coffee break, so we'll have a short coffee break until uh, 10.50, so like 12 minutes.